welcome back and today we discuss about the triangular fibrocartilage complex this is a topic that comes both in the wrist and hand complex as well as in the elbow complex what is triangular fibrocartilage complex to be frank reading your textbook about the triangular fibrocartilage complex is going to be the most cumbersome task but here we are going to simplify it in the most easiest manner possible to understand TFCC or the triangular fibrocartilage complex in a simplified manner itself. And this is quite important in our practical life or in our professional life because we might see patients coming with pain over the ulnar side of the wrist and sometimes that might be the triangular fibrocartilage which might be involved and if we don't know the proper diagnosis if we don't know the proper anatomy it would be difficult for us to diagnose so let us explore the triangular fibrocartilage in depth what is triangular fibrocartilage complex the triangular fibrocartilage complex often abbreviated like TFCC okay is a ligamentous and is a ligamentous as well as and cartilaginous structure okay what is that it is both a ligamentous and a cartilaginous structure that divide or separate the radio ulnar joint the radio ulnar joint from radio carpal joint what is that it is a ligamentous and cartilage so both components are there ligaments are the cartilage component is there and structure that divides both radio ulnar which radio ulnar joint we have proximal and distal radio ulnar joint so it would be the distal radio ulnar joint which separates distal radio ulnar joint from the radio carpal joint you know that this is the radio carpal joint and here we have the radio ulnar joint these two structures are separated from each other with the help of this uh, triangular fibrocartilage complex so triangular fibrocartilage complex is a structure which is both ligamentous as well as cartilaginous which separates or divides the radio ulnar joint from distal radio ulnar joint from which one the radio carpal joint is it clear so it is a very complex structure definitely it is a very complex structure which is very important for the stability of the wrist joint. We'll see that later, but we need to have this point now. It is a very complex structure, but very important for wrist stability. Uh, clear? So it is a very important structure, but a complex structure, which is very important for the stability of the wrist complex, right? Yes. Now, as I all as I mentioned in the previous session when you hear the term complex okay when you hear the term complex you can think that there are some different types of structures which may be involved not just one there may be many structures involved that is why we call it complex right shoulder complex means it contains four joints lateral ligament lateral collateral ligament complex means it contains various ligaments okay so similarly here at the same time in the glenohumeral joint we discussed inferior glenohumeral ligament complex IGHLC in the previous session so this triangular fibrocartilage definitely will contain various structures we need to evaluate what or uh, which are that structures right the structures that are seen in the triangular fibrocartilage when I tell you the names you might feel it uh, uh, very difficult uh, a bit difficult to understand very very bit, bit difficult to memorize but don't worry we'll do it in a simple manner now the first structure would be here the same name itself that is the triangular fibrocartilage so the first structure is the triangular fibrocartilage which is also known as the articular disc 
or maybe known as the radio ulna disc this you might have heard right radio ulna disc so the first component in the triangular fibrocartilage complex is the triangular fibrocartilage itself which is also known as the articular disc or the radio ulna disc right the second component would be him volar and dorsal volar and dorsal what are that radio ulnar ligaments radio ulnar ligaments you know that here you have the ulna and the radius so that has to be linked together with the help of few ligaments so volar and dorsal radio ulnar ligaments right now a structure which you might not have heard known as the meniscus homologous meniscus homolog which we'll study later which we'll discuss later no need to worry right then the next structure would be you have here this is the scaphoid this is the lunate this is the triquartrum okay ulna is linked to the triquartrum ulna is linked to the lunate so that ligaments will be the same name itself what is that ulno lunate ligament ulno lunate and ulno triquartral ligaments what is that ulno lunate and ulno triquartral ligaments and finally one more structure the last structure which would be extensor carpi ulnaris tendon extensor carpi ulnaris tendon so these are the five important components which together forms the triangular fibrocartilage this is completely known as the tfcc clear so the triangular fibrocartilage complex contains the triangular fibrocartilage itself, the volar and dorsal because the volar aspect and dorsal aspect we have radial ulnar ligament. So it's a radial ulnar ligament. Remember there is radius and ulna. This is the radius. This is the ulna. So definitely they have to be linked together so that would be the radial ulnar ligament. Now you just remember ulna should be linked to the trichodrum. Ulna should be linked to the lunate. So we have the ulno lunate and ulno trichodrum ligaments. Okay. Okay, they are ligaments. Then there is an additional structure known as the meniscus homolog. Okay, and finally there is an additional structure known as extensor carpi annaris muscles tendon. So these are the five structure components of a triangular fibrocartilage complex. Triangular fibrocartilage complex. In the triangular fibrocartilage extends in the ulnar side of the wrist, right? This is the side where you have the ulnar side. This is the ulnar side and here you have the triangular fibrocartilage. For example, this complete structure which I have drawn here is the triangular fibrocartilage. So this will be seen in the ulnar side of the wrist between ulna, triquadrum, lunate. Okay. And sometimes the radius also. You can include the radius or if you can skip the radius, no problems in that. Okay. So triangular fibrocartilage is a very complex structure which is very essential for the stability of the wrist joint. Okay, wrist complex. It is a fibrous and it's a cartilaginous and ligamentous structure which divides the radiocarpal from which joint, distal radio ulna joint, and it contains the components like the triangular fibrocartilage or the articular disc, volar and uh, dorsal radio ulna ligaments, meniscus homologous, ulno lunate and the ulno tricot ligament, and extensor carpi ulna tendon. When I draw the structures over here, you would find it a bit more easy to understand. So let us mark that structures, okay? Let us mark their structures together. So here, in the center region, we have the structure known as the a triangle shaped structure, a triangle shaped structure like this. This structure is known as the triangular fibrocartilage or the articular disc. Clear? Right? Then you need to link the ulna with the trichodrum. A trichodrum, that is the ulno trichodral ligaments. We have here, right? Then you need to link the ulna with the lunate. That would be the ulno lunate ligament. What is that? Ulno lunate ligaments. Okay. So this would come below uh, after the uh, radio ulnar disc. So the disc will be seen here. And uh, outer of the disc, the uh, ulno lunate ligament will be attached. And then additional structures known as this meniscus homologous, which you will le learn at the end of the session. So you have a structure over here at this 
point which is an irregular shaped connective tissue structure like this which is almost like this huh? such a structure is known as the meniscus homologous so we have here the meniscus homologous okay we have here the meniscus homologous and here this lateral end there will be uh, i will draw with the red ink with that we will be the extensor carpi radialis tendon extensor carpi radialis tendon so let us have a quick look on to the in the center region we have the radio and disc which i have shown here with the blue color okay then you have the lunate is linked by anno lunate tricodrum is linked by anno tricodral then you have here this blue color irregular shaped structure known as the meniscus homologous and here you have the red colored which one is known as the extensor carpi ulnaris tendon and then where about where is this volar and dorsal radial nerve ligament they are shown here right in outside the disc for example the disc is this shaped the outside the periphery of the disc will be made by volar and dorsal volar and dorsal radio ulnar ligaments radio ulnar ligaments will be making the periphery of the disc which will this will discuss later okay so no need to worry about that just understand and take into your mind that this is the location of the structures so the structures are located in the ulnar side of the forearm okay ulnar side of the forearm and the structures are very important for the stability of the wrist complex now we need to focus on to the first component of the triangular fibrocartilage not the other components only the first component that is the triangular fibrocartilage complex what is that okay triangular fibrocartilage tfc the tfc is also known as the radio ulnar disc or also known as the articular disc okay it is actually the continuation of articular disc of the radius it is actually the continuation of articular disc fibrous continuation of articular disc of fibrocartilage is continuation of articular disc of the radius okay so what is triangular fibrocartilage it is a triangle shaped structure definitely the name itself says that it is a triangle shaped structure so you know you know you need not worry about that if it is a triangle shaped structure it should have one apex and it should have a base okay if you look at this figure you can see that the base is attached to the radius okay base is attached to the radius and contrary to one single apex here what happens is that the structure will be having two attachment sites at the apex okay the structure will be having two attachment sites at the apex what is the bone which is the bone that is seen in the apex that is definitely ulna so one of the attachment site will be in the fovea on ulnar head fovea on the ulnar head right the second structure will be on the base of ulnar styloid base of ulnar styloid i will give you this idea with the help of bone okay so we need to see the attachment of a triangular fibrocartilage or the extension of triangular fibrocartilage okay so we have here um, our radius and ulna now this is the ulnar notch of the radius you can see that right this is the ulnar notch of the radius so this ulnar notch of the radius will be articulating with the ulnar head okay so this triangular fibrocartilage base will start from the edge of this ulnar notch it will start from the edge of the ulnar notch of distal radius edge of the ulnar notch of distal radius or edge of distal radius ulnar notch okay now uh it will have one attachment to the fovea in the ulna can you see fovea in the ulna head of course i can see it from here but i don't know whether you can see i have drawn that black ink okay that is the fovea in the ulna head so one of that attachment to be the fovea the other attachment to be at the base of this is the base of this ulna styloid here it will be attached so that is the extension of the structure known as the triangular fibro cartilage it's a triangle shaped structure which has an apex and base which extends from the radius to the ulna more clearly ulnar notch of the base of the edge of the ulnar notch of radius to the 
fovea on the ulna and the base of ulna styloid okay now when we look at into this figure okay this triangle shaped disc if you look at this figure we see that the uh, there is some uh, anatomical peculiarities like uh, the periphery of the structure will be very thick the periphery of the structure is very thick so the periphery of the structure is very thick whereas in central region is very thin it has a thin central region and a thick peripheral region am i right okay so it has a thin central region and a thick peripheral region then of course every menisci whether it is a menisci in the knee joint or anything like that has the periphery is the one which is vascularized so this is the region which will be vascularized periphery is vascularized whereas the central region is a vascular so the periphery of this triangular fibrocartilage not the complex triangular fibrocartilage is vascular and its center is a vascular therefore when there is an injury we try to correct the periphery it is more easy to heal the structure which is having the more blood supply rather than the vascular structure okay also the periphery in the ulnar side contains a lot of free nerve endings are there okay free nerve endings are seen in the periphery in the ulnar side free nerve endings what happens if there is a lot of free nerve endings definitely when there is an injury like this the triangular fibrocartilage free nerve endings may get excited and you get the pain okay so the triangular fibrocartilage ulnar side may be a source of pain when there is an inflammation or a trauma due to a various amount of free nerve endings that are seen at this structure clear now i told you earlier we had the dorsal and volar ulnar radio ulnar ligaments we need to label it this dorsal and volar radio ulnar ligaments will be forming the periphery of triangular fibrocartilage the periphery of the triangular fibrocartilage will be formed by dorsal and volar radio ulnar ligaments so the periphery of the triangular fibrocartilage will be formed by dorsal and volar dorsal and volar which ligaments radio ulnar ligament radio ulnar ligament because this is extending from the radius to ulna so the periphery is formed by or the margins are formed by the dorsal and volar radio ulnar ligaments now i told you earlier triangular fibrocartilage is in complex is in fact dividing the joint cavity into two that role is particularly done by your triangular fibrocartilage disc so this disc divides the radio ulnar and radio carpal joint the disc uh, divides the radio ulnar and radio carpal joint so that is a major function of this disc so the disc in fact when we look at the disc from a cross section we see that the disc is a biconcave in shape the disc is a biconcave in shape like this okay this is maybe the attachment side sorry that won't be like that because it's a triangle shaped structure so it will be having an attachment side like so it would be biconcave structure here here also it is concave here also it is a concave structure why because it has to accommodate here which one the convex shaped carpal bonds the convex shaped carpal bonds here it has to uh, attach the radius and the ulna which is also a convex one sir. okay so this structure makes the uh, triangular fibrocartilage a con cave structure because of the articular surface at both ends are convex shaped more clearly if you say we can call it as the proximal articular surface proximal articular surface and this you can call the distal articular surface which one this you can call the proximal articular surface and this you can call the distal articular surface the proximal articular surface will be articulating with ulnar head and which is the joint here radio ulnar joint radio ulnar joint the distal articular surface 
or the uh, distal articular surface will be articulating with the radiocarpal bones or the carpal bones or the carpal bones more correctly carpal bones so uh, the triangular fibrocartilage is a biconcave structure and has two articular surface the proximal or lower articular surface this may be called as the lower articular surface the distal or the upper articular or superior articular surface which will be definitely forming articulation with the carpal bones here you have the tricordial here you have the lunate and here you have the scaphoid and here you have the ulnar head and radio ulnar ligaments so these are the very important things that you need to remember about the triangular fibrocartilage clear okay that's all about the triangular fibrocartilage or the articular disc okay now we need to see how these structures are linked together in the uh, TFC so the relations of triangular fibrocartilage we see that the TFC the triangular fibrocartilage or the articular disc has uh, or can have a two lamina which we call upper lamina and lower lamina okay no need to worry on this the upper lamina will be attached to its molar and dorsal radio ulnar ligaments molar and dorsal radio ulnar ligament which we discussed earlier like this if this is the disc we have the molar ligament and dorsal ligaments so that's fine okay the lower lamina will be attached to the corresponding bones which is that the triquadrum it is attached to from here to the here we have the hamate is there the hamate is there then after that we have the fifth metacarpal metacarpal so the fifth metacarpal so the lower lamina will be attached to triquadrum hamate and fifth metacarpal but it cannot go and attach directly so that will be attached to the, through the ulnar collateral ligament because you side we have here the lateral collateral ligament is the this side we have the ulnar collateral ligament okay so it will be attached with the help of ulnar collateral ligaments so that means this is just the relationship you need not worry on this just remember it has two lamina, upper and lower lamina upper lamina is attached to water, water and dorsal ligaments which we already discussed then the lower lamina is attached to triquadrum hamate and the fifth metacarpal fifth metacarpal okay it is attached with the help of ulnar collateral ligament it is attached with the help of ulnar collateral ligament what is this meniscus homologous the other structure we studied it's an irregular structure it is an irregular connective tissue it is an irregular connective tissue which is seen as a part of the lower lamina which is seen as a part of the lower lamina and is a component in the triangular fibrocartilage that is the meniscus homologous so these are the general relationships of a triangular fibrocartilage complex all the structures which we have discussed in the fibrocartilage complex are related now first one we have triangular fibrocartilage okay the disc it has two lamina so the lamina upper is related to molar and dorsal ligament so the second structure is over the third structure is the uh, which one you call the meniscus homologous it is the part of lower lamina then the ulnar tricordial and ulnar lunate ligament because we saw that it is related to tricordial hamate and the fifth metacarpal right so that way we relate all the structures and finally what is the importance of triangular fibrocartilage the triangular fibrocartilage is a very important structure which contribute to the wrist stability i told you right how it contribute to the wrist stability because it is a structure that helps in absorption of the forces as well as transmission of forces in the radio ulnar joint okay it is a structure which helps in the absorption and transmission of forces in the wrist complex okay it divides the radio ulnar joint from the radio carpal joint it divides the radio ulnar joint from the radio carpal joint okay it acts as a structure which provides the articular continuation okay to the radiocarpal joints so that there is connection between not just the radius and the carpals but also this ulna is also related to the carpal bone so that this enables greater rotatory movements in the wrist complex so it enables rot a greater amount of rotatory movements by acting as an a continuation of the articular surface of the radius so you know that in radiocarpal joint formation ulna do not have a role that role is actually played by the articular 
particular disc and the triangular fibrocartilage so that the structures are continuous as one together so that there is an effective force transmission in all this direction there is an effective force absorption there is also not a rigid connection but a flexible connection a fibrous connection therefore greater amount of rotations are possible if for example instead of this triangular fibrocartilage it was direct bone to bone connection that range of motion might have been very less okay with might uh, that range of motion would be a bit uh, less than that is normal we have so that's the result this flexible structure of our radial nerve disc and triangular fibrocartilage enables better range of motion so it helps in the transmission of force absorption of force better range of motion or better range of motion or rotation it separates the radio ulnar and radio carpal joints it also act as a load bearing structure because all these bones are connected to each other through various fibrous connected tissue the triangular fibrocartilage itself means that it has a lot of connections so this lot of connection enable may or make it a load bearing structure so it also act as a load bearing structure effective load bearing structure so what are the importance of triangular fibrocartilage it is a very important structure contributing the stability of the wrist complex it separates the two joints it separates the two joints it helps in the dissipation of force and absorption of the force it act as a continuation of articular surface in the ulnar side it also helps in what is the last function that we saw it also help in load bearing it also help act or act as an effective load bearing structure so this structure may be involved uh, injured when there is a forceful ulnar deviation and there is a forceful ulnar deviation the structure may be involved and we may get pain or when there is a condition known as positive ulnar variance we discussed in ulnar variance the first session on wrist complex when there is a positive ulnar variance or when there is a forceful ulnar deviation the structure may be involved and uh, the patient would complain of pain in the wrist side with some clicking or a t -t clicking sensation or a what palpable feeling in the pc form level there will be a tingling a pick, a clicking sound or clicking sensation or a tenderness in the pc form and the ulnar head okay so this would be diagnosed with the mri and arthroscopy because it's often soft tissue involved so you cannot find out with other routine diagnosis we go for mri and arthroscopy and usually manage with nsides and some steroids and if it is highly irritated surgical management would be necessary often one of the good news is that it's a prognosis is very good it heals itself because periphery is highly vascularized and uh, the pain would be reduced the excessive pain is because of the lot of free nerve endings that are attached to this structure so this is all about the triangular fibrocartilage complex it is more injured when there is an ulnar deviation forceful ulnar deviation and, and when there is a condition known as positive ulnar variance existing so if you like the video don't forget to click the like button and kindly subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed